So my name is Tom Solomon. I am a professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy here at Bucknell. Okay, so basically what I'm going to talk about here really came from a conversation I had a with a student um, a few years ago. We were actually talking about the second law of thermodynamics and why it is that heat flows from a hot object to a cold object. And she came up to me after class and she said, hey, Tom, if the heat, if you put an ice cube in hot coffee and heat flowed from the ice cube to the coffee, would you call that a miracle? And it was one of the most interesting questions that I've gotten from a student. And I actually thought about that for a little bit. And the answer that I give at the end of this talk is, is the answer that I gave to her. Um, but it was a really interesting discussion that I had with her. Um, so a couple of years ago, a student asked me a question. She said, if something happened that didn't agree with the laws of physics, would I call that a miracle? So as an example, I'm holding a ball in my hand, and then I'm going to go ahead and open up my fingers. So what will happen? Well, we know what will happen. The ball will fall to the ground. But what if instead of falling, the ball kind of floated in midair instead? Would I call that a miracle? Now, before I answer that question, let's think a little bit about what's going on here. So I want to start by talking about the actual ball. The atoms in this ball wouldn't exist were it not for billions of years of stellar evolution. Stars are literally factories that make everything that isn't hydrogen. They also produce light, which is really a good thing for us. Um, and when the largest stars die, they explode and fling all those atoms out into space later to combine to form a planet like the Earth. Now think about this. The atoms in this ball, and in fact in my hand, exist because of supernova star explosions. Okay, now let's talk about gravity. So gravity seems very commonplace and ordinary, but that is far from the truth. So watch what happens. I open my hands, and the ball starts moving on its own without anything touching it. That is incredibly bizarre. But we don't appreciate how bizarre it is because we see it every day. If you lived in a world without gravity, and, you try, and someone tried to explain that to you, you wouldn't believe that something that insane could actually happen. Now, let's look at my hand that was holding the ball. Um, you've got this kind of intricate assembly of bones, tendons, muscles that enable my hand to do really amazing things, including actually holding and releasing the ball. But it's not just my hand. Right now, there is a membrane in my throat that is vibrating, and that vibrating membrane is causing disturbances in the air in front of my mouth. Those disturbances cause waves that propagate through the air, go into your head or into the camera that's filming these things here, and cause another membrane to vibrate. And somehow, out of all of this, you understand a message that I'm sending to you. Now think about that. It seems so trivial and obvious that I can talk and you can somehow understand what I'm saying. But communicating by causing vibrations in the air around us and somehow interpreting those vibrations, that's really, really cool. And all of this, my hand, our ability to communicate with vibrations, everything in our bodies, um, all forms of life on the planet, all came about through millions of years of random mutations and natural selection. It's really incredible when you think about all of it. The universe started 15 billion years ago as a collection of just three types of elementary particles. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. And now, look at what we have. Those elementary particles have assembled into an amazing assortment of combinations that can do so many fascinating things. Obviously, my hand, um, the ball, the water thing here, the piano over there, the cool lighting devices and the fog machine up here, um, and us. 
But we are not just machines that can perform tasks. We're also sentient beings who can feel emotions, who can create art and music, and who can study the universe that we are a part of. Think about this. The universe is actually aware of itself and it is creating art. So when I come to the Weiss Center and I'm watching a performance, let's say an orchestra, I often find myself watching the musicians and listening to the music um, and just marveling at what the universe has created. Think about this. A bunch of electrons, protons, and neutrons have come together after 15 billion years to make and derive pleasure from music. That is truly the masterpiece of the universe. It's difficult to put into words just how amazing and incredible all of this is. And what we've discussed is just the tip of a very, very large iceberg. It's easy for us to take all this for granted because we see this every day. But my job as a physicist gives me the opportunity to study this amazing universe um, and the laws that govern how everything works. Those laws are what makes everything, all of this possible. So let's go back to the original question. I've got this ball in my hand and a student asks, if I open up my fingers and the ball floats upward, would I call that a miracle? No. In my opinion, violating the laws of the universe, that's not a miracle. The laws of the universe themselves are the miracle. Everything around us, everything is a miracle.